Tomo News presents DNA Research. Three parent babies soon to become a reality? US health officials are debating whether to approve trials for a novel in vitro fertilization technique which uses the DNA from three people to eliminate debilitating disease. The technique replaces the mother's defective mitochondrial DNA with a healthy donor's DNA. Defective mitochondrial DNA from the mother's egg can lead to muscle weakness and even heart and respiratory failure in offspring. Replacing the defective egg with healthy mitochondrial DNA from a second mother could circumvent life-threatening mitochondrial diseases. Critics of this technique argue that this puts humankind on a slippery slope towards designer babies. Baby born using controversial new fertility technique. Thanks to a team from the New Hope Fertility Center in New York, the world now has its first three-person baby. A five-month-old baby was conceived via a new method that uses his birth parent's DNA along with that of a second woman. The technique was used to avoid passing on the mother's mitochondrial genes, which carried a fatal genetic disorder. Called spindle nuclear transfer, the procedure involved replacing the nucleus of the donor egg with that of the mother's. The resulting hybrid, an egg with the mother's nuclear DNA and the donor's mitochondrial DNA, is then fertilized by the father's sperm. Five embryos were created using the procedure, but only one developed normally. It was implanted in the mother's uterus, and the baby was born nine months later. The controversial method has not been approved in the U.S., so the team traveled to Mexico to get the procedure done there. The boy remains healthy. His genes carry less than 1% of his mother's mutation, which doctors believe is too low to cause any problems. Chinese scientists modify genes of human embryos. Scientists worldwide have renewed calls for a halt to controversial human embryo research after a team of Chinese scientists published a paper on the genetic editing of human embryos. Researchers at Sun Yat-sen University in Guangzhou, China hope to modify a gene in chromosome 11 responsible for beta thalassemia, a genetic mutation that reduces production of hemoglobin and results in a lack of oxygen in the body. The embryos used in the research each had an extra set of chromosomes after being fertilized by two sperms, meaning they could not result in a live birth. The research involved injecting the embryos with the enzyme complex CRISPR-Cas9, which splices DNA at specific locations. Researchers can then modify the gene causing beta thalassemia by programming the enzyme complex to target that specific gene. Of the 86 embryos injected with the enzyme, only 71 survived the initial 48-hour period needed for CRISPR to replace the DNA. Of the 54 embryos that were tested, researchers found that only 28 had successfully spliced, with a fraction of those 28 containing the replacement genetic material. The research team found a surprising number of mutations cropped up as a result of the CRISPR-Cas9 complex acting on parts of the genome other than the target area. Critics say the procedure could produce unknown effects on future generations as all modifications would be inheritable. Identical twins, unidentical after one spends a year in space. This is Mark and Scott Kelly, both NASA astronauts and identical twins. Well, at least they used to be. Following his year in space, scientists compared the DNA and RNA of Scott Kelly with his identical twin brother Mark via whole genome sequencing. They found that 7% of Kelly's DNA had changed into so-called space genes. As well as that, his immune system, bone formation and eyesight all went under changes during his year in space. Telomeres, caps on chromosomes, typically shorten as a person ages. Kelly's lengthened but returned to normal two days after he returned to Earth in 2016. So given a chance, would you spend any time in space? Meet the iMotif. 
Aussie scientists just found something new, cool, and rather obscure about our genetic blueprint. Research published in the journal Nature Chemistry details a new type of DNA structure named the eye motif. Here's the knot-like structure again. What's interesting about it is how it's built. Normal DNA is made up of bases coded as letters. These are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. These all bind to another letter except in the eye motif where they don't. Normally, cytosine binds to guanine and vice versa, but in the new structure, cytosine was found to pair with cytosine. And that has researchers puzzled as to what that means, but they do have some ideas. According to The Independent, scientists reckon the new structure may be partly responsible for reading DNA and turning them into useful substances. Gizmodo reports they may act as a sort of switch for controlling gene expression, but could mean nothing at all. The Independent reports that the structure has been cited previously, but this is the first time researchers have found it inside living cells. One thing's for sure, our bodies are a whole lot more complicated than we realize. How to edit genetics without changing DNA Scientific brilliance coming out of the MIT Harvard Broad Institute may one day better the lives of millions. DNA directs protein on how to build cells via RNA. A new study, published in the journal Science, details how DNA instructions can be chemically altered via edits to information in the RNA. The DNA remains unchanged, while proteins build cells based on the edited instructions. The method is not ready for human trials, but could one day help those suffering from degenerative diseases. Are humans next? China successfully cloned monkeys using transfer DNA, marking the first time such a feat has been achieved and possibly paving the way for human cloning. Scientists in Shanghai have cloned two genetically identical macaques using the same technique that produced Dolly the sheep. Somatic cell nuclear transfer involves taking the nucleus of a cell, which contains its genetic material, and injecting it into an egg that has had its own nucleus removed. The egg cell is then treated with enzymes to stimulate embryo development, just like a naturally fertilized egg. In all, the researchers created 109 embryos and implanted them into 21 surrogate monkeys, resulting in six pregnancies, but only two live births. The macaques named Zhong Zhong and Hua Hua aren't the first primates to be cloned, though. That distinction belongs to Tetra, a rhesus monkey created using a simpler embryo-splitting method. The Chinese team believes the monkey clones could be useful in medical research, specifically in the study of genetic diseases like Parkinson's or autism. Researchers have found that underwater microbes have been wildly exchanging genetic material to survive the harsh Antarctic waters. When the Antarctic continent rose up from the ocean 3,500 years ago, it captured small pockets of water, forming saline lakes on its surface. Deep Lake is one such example. Its high salt concentration prevents it from freezing even at minus 20 degrees Celsius. Haloarchaea have evolved to survive in its freezing salty waters. Lately, researchers have found a long sequence of DNA shared across many Haloarchaea. Incredibly, despite the shared survival mechanisms, different Haloarchaea species coexist peacefully within their niches in Deep Lake. Researchers are looking to tap these resilient Haloarchaea for polar oil spill cleanup. This groundbreaking finding assembles eight years of work and was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Big Brother is real, and he lives in Beijing. China is compiling a massive DNA database of people the communist government thinks are troublemakers, even those who've never committed a crime. According to Human Rights Watch, China's Ministry of Public Security has compiled a database with the DNA information of more than 40 million citizens. The Human Rights Watch dogs says police are creating biometric profiles for people the government considers a threat, including political activists, migrant workers, students, and Uyghur Muslims. In some cases, authorities have demanded DNA samples before processing documents, such as residency permits, ID cards, and even passports. Last year, police in Xinjiang province required all passport applicants to submit their DNA. This came shortly after local cops budgeted the equivalent of nearly 12 million U.S. dollars for biometric testing kits. Xinjiang province is in the far west of China. It's home to 10 million Uyghur Muslims and has a long history of state repression. 
Human Rights Watch says police in China have wide-ranging powers that make it difficult to refuse giving a DNA sample. The country also has no privacy rights and lacks an independent judiciary. The Human Rights Watch dog says China's DNA database violates ordinary citizens' right to privacy. Similar DNA systems have been outlawed elsewhere, such as in the European Union. Oh well, you know what they say, folks. If you got nothing to hide, you got nothing to fear. Yeah. Right.